Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today we're going to be talking about mailboxes, and we'd like to thank Lori Taylor for liking and sharing the podcast. Some of the first mail slots were in doors in homes in France in wow, the 17. 17... Se... <laughs> I speak for a living. In the <laughs> 1700s, in 1863, the U.S. Post Office started delivering mail, and mail carriers would knock on your door and hand deliver your mail until 1916. Wow. They say that they wasted hours every day waiting for people to answer the door. <laughs> In 1923, mailboxes became mandatory on homes, and then in 1978, the new regulation was all new housing development must have curbside mailboxes or a centralized mailbox, and that eliminates the postal carrier from having to walk up to the house. Hmm. There are a variety of mailboxes you can get. The two most common are going to be wall mount or post mount, and in some urban areas or older communities, you may still have a mail slot in your door or a recessed mailbox on the siding next to your door. Mm -hmm. So one of the houses we bought in Chicago, they had a slot on the side of the door. It was actually on the siding next to the door, Mm -hmm. and it went into a wooden sleeve that went through the wall and then fell into like a wooden box. Hmm. And our tenant just hated it because mail was constantly getting stuck in that sleeve and (laughs) she's trying to pull it out. So we ended up just putting insulation in there, covering it, and putting a wall mount Hmm. right over that slot. When you're replacing a wall mount mailbox on your house and you're changing the location, you should check with your postal carrier for the preferred location and height. So the regulation says it has to be convenient for the postal carrier. They don't give a specific height or location, which is interesting. And if your postal carrier doesn't like the location or they feel it's inconvenient, Mm -hmm. they can stop delivery until you change it. If you're in an area where you have door slots and you've changed your front door, the new slot must be an inch and a half tall by seven inches wide. And the bottom of the slot has to be at least 30 inches above the floor. And it has to have a flap hinged at the top. If you have a vertical slot in your door, which I've never seen, the hinge must be on the opposite side from the door hinge. Why? (laughs) I I don't know. So there's door kits that you can get if you're cutting a hole in your door and they're going to have a metal sleeve generally and then they're going to have that flap that's Mm spring-loaded. And so it it just makes it more decorative. Rather than just cutting a hole in your door, (laughs) you've got, you know, it's going to be weather tight and Mm -hmm. mosquitoes won't get in your house. (laughs) For a post-mounted mailbox, there are guidelines for the size and where it can be placed next to the road for easy delivery by a mail truck. And you're going to see T, C, or L mailboxes. Why wouldn't you say T, L, C? This is the post office, Cindy. (laughs) So T is for traditional, C is contemporary, and L is locking. And the traditional style, this was originally developed in 1915 by Jorlman. Who's that? So (laughs) So he was a postal employee and an engineer. And he designed that iconic look, so rectangular with that dome top Is and that the flag. His only name? Yes. Like Cher? <laughs> Prince? <Right. laughs> the approved sizes for curbside post mounted mailboxes was set for manufacturers. So their small was 5 inches wide, 6 inches tall, and 18 and a half inches long. Medium, 6 inches wide, 7 inches tall, 19 and a half inches long. And the large at 8 inches wide, 11 inches tall, and 22 inches long. And now the new language for the post-mounted mailboxes, they give a min and a max size. So it can be anywhere from 6 and a quarter to 11 inches wide, 6 inches to 15 inches tall, and from 18 and 9 sixteenths to 22 and 13 sixteenths long. Ugh, I hate these numbers. (laughs) If you find a mailbox you love or you plan on building your own that's not in this size range, Mm -hmm. you should actually go down to your local post office and get it approved. Because if they don't approve it, the post office won't deliver mail to the box. Hmm. And another thing, if you create your own design and a mail carrier gets cut on it or gets a splinter, you're liable for damages. Wow. If you have a locking mailbox, the new slot size is one and three quarter inches high by 10 inches wide. And it has to have a cover that opens inward. That way it's easy for the mail to be deposited. Mm. And then you should also check to see if your community has a homeowner's association with bylaws because you can't have restrictions to the color and shape. Okay. 
The post office says the mailbox can be any color and the signal flag can be any color, except for green, white, brown, yellow, or blue. So most colors, I can't be. <laughs> and the preferred color is orange or red, and the flag must be a contrasting color to the box. Hmm. For a post-mounted mailbox, the front of the box needs to be between 6 and 8 inches from the curb, and the bottom of the mailbox needs to be between 41 and 45 inches from the road surface, and the post should be 24 inches deep into the ground, and this just makes it easy for delivery from a mail truck. Hmm. Because there's about 100 people killed every year from driving into mailboxes that like, are immovable. Wh- what? The, so if you've got it made out of brick or concrete, you know, some people... People die? About 100 people wow. die. They say between 70 and 100 people die every year. And this is from the Federal Highway Administration and also the post office. They're now recommending only use a 4x4 wood post or a 2-inch diameter or less of standard steel or aluminum. In a couple of the communities, I was reading their regulations, and they're saying an inch and a half thin metal or less. And they are all saying, do not use anything that's unyielding. Heavy-duty metal pipe, concrete posts, farm equipment, I guess, are very popular in some rural areas. And do not bury the posts more than 24 inches deep. So the post office and the Federal Highway Administration want that post and the mailbox to fall away if a car hits it. Mm-hmm. And some villages now are not allowing you to put your post in concrete. Really? So I called the local post office, and they said, do not use concrete or brick when you're putting up your post for the mailbox. So they recommended put your post in sand, dirt, or gravel. Hmm. I still can't get over the fact that people die. Yeah, amazing. So definitely check with your village before you put up your new mailbox, because if they see you doing it and it's not regulation, they'll stop delivering mail until you fix it. Hmm. I found it interesting that once you get an approved mailbox and it's installed correctly, it becomes the property of the Postal Service. So they have control of it in exchange for the free delivery service. Hmm. So now if somebody vandalizes the mailbox, the federal government can prosecute them. They can have fines up to $250,000 and three years in jail. Wow. The size of the house numbers on the mailbox is usually regulated by the fire and police department. Mm-hmm. Three to six inches is the most common size range. And in some areas, if you have a wall mount mailbox, it depends on how far from the street you are, the right. size. And many towns, the mailbox and the house has to have numbers, so that's something good to check also. Mm-hmm. And the colors must contrast with the background. Which you do need to be careful with this, because a lot of times the numbers that come with the mailbox aren't the size for your town. Right, exactly. If you're going to a hardware store or a home center for a wall mount mailbox, you're primarily going to see them in plastic and metal, and the two styles are horizontal or vertical. Mm -hmm. Some of these are going to come with a template to lay out your spacing for screws or wall anchors, and some are going to come with the mounting hardware, but many don't, so check the label, and they can take two or four screws. And if you have vinyl or aluminum siding, you can get siding brackets, so it's going to square up the mailbox over the laps of the siding and make it very easy to install. For a post-mount mailbox, you can buy the mailbox itself in metal or plastic with or without a post. And if you buy the mailbox itself and plan on using a 4x4 post, you can get a 4x4 post with a horizontal piece of wood at the top, and that's going to make it very easy to mount your mailbox too. Or if you get just a standard 4x4, I would get one of these mounting brackets. It's going to slide over the top of the 4x4, Mm -hmm. and it's going to make it very easy to mount your mailbox. You can also get a kit. So this is going to come with a mailbox, a mounting bracket, and a post cover that you're going to slide over the 4x4 post, and mm-hmm. it's usually going to be in plastic, and these generally won't come with a 4x4 post. When you're shopping for this stuff, you're probably going to have more luck at a home center. They'll carry everything where, like, a local hardware store probably yeah. won't carry a 4x4. Yeah, or a local hardware store might have one 4x4 yeah, like post. In, one. In the, or they might have two. They might have just a standard 4x4 post and then the one with the horizontal piece of wood on it. And they're probably not going to carry that many styles out mailbox either. Yeah, for, for this project, you probably have more of a variety in a home center. And then for the post, you can get cedar, redwood, untreated 4x4s if you're looking to spend less money, or pressure-treated posts. And the section that's going to be in the ground, I would treat that with a waterproofing for below grade and then use a sealer to protect against UV above Mm. grade. If you're getting pressure-treated wood, I would get ground contact pressure-treated, and then I would still protect the wood above ground with a UV sealer. 
A sealer you'll find in most hardware stores is by Rust-Oleum. It's their Copper Coat Green Wood Preservative, and this is good for above and below ground for wood, and it leaves a slight green tint to the wood, and mm. they also have this in black. You want to go over some tips on how to install a post-mount mailbox? Yes. So recently I installed one of these plastic kits, so it's the mailbox and a sleeve that you slide right over a 4x4 post. Right. So th these are pretty common. First thing you'd want to do is call 811 and mark for any underground utilities. Are I you making a new hole? Yes. Let's say we're making a new hole. Let's say that you have an old mailbox and the previous person put it in like two bags of concrete huh. and there's no way you're pulling this out so you want to slide this over a little what bit. What do you do with that? Cut it off and put a new hole with a post hole digger. Or no, you could... But I mean like what do you do with the concrete in the yeah, ground? Yeah, leave it in the ground, man. It's harder than heck, really. It's very difficult to remove. So if you're trying to... So you just have this yeah, concrete well, pad in a, there? A lot, well, you can break it up, but a lot of people will go two feet or deeper, and depending on how wide they created the diameter, you can have, you know, some people I've seen put two bags of concrete. Hmm. Ridiculous. You could have, you know, over 100 pounds of concrete. So I would move it. <laughs> so for your project, you're going to mark it. You're go and, and in fact, to mark the location, I like taking the mailbox and laying it out so that the front of that mailbox is six inches from the curb approximately, and now you know where you're going to dig your hole. Now you can use a post hole digger, an auger to create your hole. I like a wheelbarrow to throw the extra dirt in. For most projects, you want your post down two feet, but I would create a two and a half foot deep hole, and that way you can put in six inches of gravel for drainage. Hmm. I like using scrap wood, like a one by four, pound it at an angle on adjacent side. So on one side, I'll pound a one by four into the ground at an angle. I'll use a level, and I'll make sure that the post is plumb, and screw a screw into it to lock it on one side, and then either on the front or the back, I'll put another piece of wood into the dirt at an angle and screw it in, and now that post is being held perfectly plumb. Okay. And you want to make sure the front of that 4x4 four four is square with the road, and then you're going to fill your hole with either sand, gravel, dirt, or concrete. I used an expanding foam on my project. The kit I had, they wanted the top of that 4x4 four four two feet from the top of the soil. So I used a cordless reciprocating saw to cut down the height of the post. Hmm. And then this kit just slid right over the 4x4, four four, and it took four bolts to screw in. And I used an impact driver to put it in, and it was just very easy to install. Nice. You said you used expanding foam? It's the Sika fence post mix. So yes. So it's <laughs> S-I-K-A. This is a two-part expanding foam. So it's polyurethane. It's very similar to the expanding foam insulation. Hmm. This mixes in 20 seconds. It sets up in three minutes, and it cures in two hours. Wow. And the company says it takes the place of one to two bags of concrete. I figured I'd try it. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting. So the way they want you to do it is they want you to take your 4x4, four four, get it into the hole, level it, and support it, wear safety goggles and gloves, and it comes with this pouch that has two sections. You grab one end, and you start rolling this pouch and compressing it, it breaks a seal, the two chemicals mix, and you shake this and knead it for about 20 seconds. You cut the corner and you pour this into the hole, and then it just starts expanding, like expanding foam. Huh. And you want to make sure you have a level on your post so that it stays in place. Right. But in like three minutes, it's pretty solid, and it's fully cured in two hours. So yeah. a very easy way to fill a hole. Nice. If your village allows you to use concrete, you can use a dry mix or a wet mix. Make sure you're wearing gloves, goggles, and a dust mask. And with the dry mix, this is great if you don't have a wheelbarrow or a concrete tub to mix your concrete in. And check the label for the depth and width of the hole. Usually for an 8 inch wide hole, 2 feet deep, one bag's going to do the job. And all you have to do is square up your post in this. If you're working alone, you'd want to use a couple pieces of scrap wood so that your post is plumb. Mm -hmm. If you have a helper, they can just hold on to it for you. But you just, well, there's two different types. So with one type of dry mix, you're going to pour in the water, usually about half the height of the hole. And then you're just going to walk around and pour the mix evenly on top of the water. And that's going to set up in like five minutes. Hmm. The other type of dry mix, you're going to pour your, you're going to pour the mix in first and then pour the water on top. So they're very easy to use. They usually set up very quickly within a few minutes. So what do you do? You just stand there and hold it? Stand there and hold it. <laughs> That's why I like the scrap wood, <laughs> so you don't have to hold it. But, but definitely check it with a level on two sides to make mm -hmm. sure it's plumb. Most companies want you to do this between 40 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit and no rain in the forecast for 24 to 48 hours.
For a wet mix, you can use a mixing tub, a wheelbarrow, a mixing bag, or a mixing tarp. If you're using a wheelbarrow or a tub, a hoe is really an effective tool to mix the concrete with, or you can use a shovel. Make sure you're wearing rubber gloves, goggles, and a dust mask, and you're going to empty your bag into the wheelbarrow or the tub. You're going to create a depression in the center of the mix and then add your water. For a 60-pound bag, it's usually a half a gallon of water, but check the label. You don't want to use too much water or it's going to weaken the mix. Hmm. Add about half of the amount of water, start mixing it together, and then slowly add the rest of the water. And if you've mixed enough concrete where it's coming out of the hole, you can slope it away from the post so you can kind of create a dome shape on top. And then a couple of the pros I saw, what they did was they added extra concrete, they created this dome shape, and then they put decorative stone into this hmm. so it made it more attractive. And then also it keeps grass away from the post so you're not using a, an edger oh, okay. too close to the post. Two of the top rated companies for post mix and concrete is Sacrete, it's S-A-K-R-E-T-E, -E, and Quickcrete, Q-U-I-K-E-T-E. -E. And I was talking to the Sacrete people and they suggest using a gallon jug to fill with water for even measuring when you're pouring in your water to oh, your cement. That's smart. I saw one of the top rated concrete mixing bags. Mm -hmm. It's called Concrete Mixing Bag. <laughs> and then one of the mixing tarps that was rated very high is called Rapid Mixer. It's R-A-P-I-D. And this is can be used by one or two people and it's reusable. And then when you're mixing it back and forth, so you're putting your concrete into this tarp, mm -hmm. putting water into it, and then you're, you're holding the corners and you're just shaking it back and forth. Right. So it mixes and then it turns into a funnel so you can pour it into the hole. We've talked about this before. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't remember when, but I know we did. <laughs> Some of the top rated mailboxes at the hardware stores and home centers, Mail Boss, Step 2, and it's just S-T-E-P, and then the number 2, Gibraltar, G-I-B-R-A-L-T-A-R, Architectural, and Solar. Some of the top rated security mailboxes, so these are Locking, Protex, P-R-O-T-E-X, Epoch, E-P-O-C-H, Gorilla Box, and Salisbury, S-A-L-S-B-U-R-Y. Some designer mailboxes, so Hampton, H-A-M-P-T-O-N, they have an aluminum mailbox and a post, very decorative, really wild looking. Umbra, U-M-B-R-A, they've got all kinds of designer stuff, so some of them look like a large envelope oh, that you put fine. your envelopes into. And then River's Edge, They've got these mailboxes that look like giant fish. <laughs> Do you have anything else to add? If you're moving the location of a wall mount mailbox, make sure you're getting the okay from your postal carrier for the location and the height. Check with your village. If you want to use concrete, make sure that that's allowed in your community. Mm -hmm. And then check with your village for the number size for the mailbox. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, iHeartRadio, and CastBox. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Follow us on Twitter at Fix It Podcast. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.